Uh, hi, everybody. So, yeah, my point today is uh, how do we buy food and how open source can change the way we buy and sell food. So my name is Miriam, I actually come from France and I moved to Norway almost a year ago. And I have two passions in life. My first passion is collaborative economy. I told a bit about it this morning. I am a member of this think and do tank called WeShare. So actually open source is one of the fundamental brick of collaborative economy and uh, about all this new paradigm and the new society we want to build, which is based not on competition, but on collaboration, and which is kind of reinventing the way we cooperate and collaborate with each other. So, yeah, open source is one of those bricks around with collaborative consumption, peer-to-peer uh, -peer finance, crowdfunding, and uh, all the open uh, design and manufacturing, open source hardware also, not only software, all the open knowledge and the, the new governance that we build around this, uh, and, uh, and also the exchange tools. We're talking about Bitcoin, but uh, finding the good exchange tools to balance our contribution in society. My second passion is food. I love good food. And I have to say that I was a bit disappointed when I moved to Norway. <laughs> I used to buy my vegetable in the marketplace directly to the farmer and I like to know where my food comes from and I like as much as possible to try to buy local food because when the food uh, is uh, transported it has impact on carbon emission and, um, and also all the heavy packaging that you have when you buy food in a supermarket. I don't want all those packaging, I don't really need them and I want also sustainable farming, so I want as much as possible to try to buy projects that I know have not uh, bad consequences on the environment. So I, I, was, uh, I found it a bit hard actually to find affordable local organic products in Norway. And I tried, I met, met a lot of people and tried to find a solution <laughs> and tried to build a project to, to address that issue. And we co-founded a, a non-profit called Altifrem whose purpose is to support the emergence of an alter alternative distribution system. I'll explain a bit more where we found this as a key issue to, to turn and make it uh, more affordable and more available, efficient. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the question is what food system do we want? Do we want a system which is uniformized, so we all have the same product and controlled by very few major actors, multinational, big corporate chains? Or do we want um, an equal and biodiversity in the system? Do we want uh, to be able to buy a lot of different things from a lot of different people? Do we want to support the farmers and the people who grow, make, transform the product? Or do we want to support the um, big machine that we are talking this morning? Let's talk about the Norwegian context. <laughs> Um, I think it's pretty the same in all the countries, but let's talk Norway, I take Norway as an example. In Norway, 96% of the market, the, the food market and the food system is controlled by three major chains that control not only the retail stores, but the whole uh, supply chain, the transport, the wholesaler, they control the whole system. So if a farmer today wants to sell his products, he has not a lot of other options than sell to this this big wholesaler that controlled the market. And, and that's this wholesaler who decides the price and the quantity he's going to buy. And for a farmer, it's uh, hard to find alternatives to that. And, and as a consequence, of course, it's harder and harder for the farmers to make a living because those big companies, they want uh, the lowest price possible. And um, yeah, so less and less farmers are actually uh, still growing in Norway. We had a 10% less organic farmers in 2014, but globally, in the last uh, decade, one third of the farmers have stopped their activity. And it's, it's a concentration, so not only of the uh, processes of food and the retailers, but also of the farms that become bigger and bigger and more industrialized. And this, of course, also induces an opacity in the system. So the system is very centralized. The, the good thing is that the local food is a growing sector. More and more people are aware about the, the impact of buying imported food and, um, and, and also for supporting local ecosystems. So it's more and more people who, are, who want to support this. And there are emerging alternatives. Some farmers start together and create their own self-distribution. For example, Ecologie Special Corn, that's 11 corn farmers who have created their own 
uh, website to sell directly. And some eaters also, <laughs> consumers, start gathering to, crea to create alternatives like Cooperative or Dugu, Mat Collective in Belgium. It's just Cooperative, for example, it's 1,600 people like me, like you, who just uh, buy as a group vegetable to local farmers and we organize like we, we organize a logistic to bring this so the problem is that the, the distribution is like a key factor in this and to be able to to support the distribution system we want and to reconnect with the person who grow the food we eat so those alternatives they are either direct marketing like the farmer markets i told you a farmer who decided to open its own web shop or uh, Andelslandbruck, like the community supported agriculture, or it can be um, self managed distribution, which results of a partnership between eaters, like, like a cooperative, a consumer buying club, or between farmers, or between a mix of, of both. So that's, that's what we want to support because if we go in, in global anonymous, <laughs> then it's centralized. And we want to support a system which reconnect and not disintermediate the growers and the eaters. Probably you heard about the third industrial revolution from Jeremy Rifkin. Let's talk about a third food revolution. What Jeremy Rifkin says about energy is that we used to have big production centers that were delivering everywhere. And now with the third industrial revolution, we are going back to very small scale production, like every building become a producer of energy and they're all interconnected to each other so they can, you produce for your very local environment, but you are connected with all, with, with the, the other producers and you can exchange very easily. So we can apply that actually to food, like by building communities of strong ties and more and more we are going back to court raised mats, short uh, produced food, and, and the producers are connected to the local communities, but they are all connected to one another. And this system is actually very efficient. It's economically efficient because you cut out all of the intermediates that you have today in a centralized system. So the farmer get a better, get a price and the consumer also get a better price. And uh, you cooperate by cooperating on, on platforms also, you can have more efficiencies. It's uh, environmentally efficient because you don't have all the, the carbon emission due to transportation. And you have also more transparency in the system, which means more sustainable practices. And you don't need all those packaging. Also, when you buy more local food, you need packaging when you import tons of grapes from South Africa. But you don't need that for, for the local products. And also, socially speaking, it's uh, building back the sense of community and rebuilding our communities by reconnecting people with each other. It's about empowering communities and people and uh, build a um, system by the people, for the people, and not by the three major chains for the multinational behind them. So we want to disrupt, actually, this system. So how Open Food, Open Food Network is going to do that? So Open Food Network is an open source platform. I was telling you about Cooperative, Du Good, Mat Collective, all those initiatives, they all have bought and, and customized their own platform. This is not really efficient, cost efficient, and, uh, and energy efficient. So the idea was just the, the founder of Open Food Network, um, they started in 2012 in Australia, and they, they, they looked at all the platforms that were existing and they didn't find one which was able to support really a change in the system. So the idea was to start building an open source one where all the community could contribute to build the tool they need to build this distribution system instead of each one making its own small isolated uh, alternative. So. The technology is not really important. The question is about the people who are uh, uh, contributing and who form this system. The project was started by a non-profit whose vision was to build these commons and build also the governance around these commons to e enable the communities to operate and build their, the distribution system that they want. And um, it, it's also much more resilient. There is something I didn't say, but in this, um, in this vision, the system is much more resilient. If you have a centralized system, if something happens, the whole system collapses. But if you have a very decentralized system, one actor can default, the whole system is not endangered. So what are the values behind this, uh, this project? It's, of, of course, openness, like build these commons and empower distributed innovation. So we are not imposing any business model to, to the communities. Each community can find the model which is adapted to, 
to the local context. It's transparent. What we don't want to say uh, that uh, that only the system should be for organic farmers. It's not about that. It's just being transparent and tell people how the products have been grown. Tell how, what is the margin which is taken by each actor in the system. It's systemic. We don't want to create a new buying club or to create a new cooperative. We want to create a system and to put all those actors together in a network so that they can really address the root cause, the root cause of this distribution system and, 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 and induce this network effect that will really be able to disrupt the existing system. And as I said, it's also di diverse and flexible, so we support any different type of business model and size. We're not imposing any model. What we want is lots of local food enterprises, which are diver diverse, independent, and all connected to one another. So you have on one side the producers, and, and the producer can be a grower, but it can be someone who is making cookies, someone who, it can be an, any kind of producer. <laughs> and the buyers uh, can be an individual, but it can also be a restaurant, a hospital, um, an institution. So you, in, on the platform, you can, as a producer, you can have direct sell, you can choose to open your own farm boutique and, and sell directly to, to the individuals, but you can also create hubs that will gather different type of products and because it's more like e convenient for a customer to buy not his potatoes there and his carrots there and his meat there, it's more convenient to, to be able to have a, a, a range of products, but you can have very diverse type of hubs that can be adapted to different, uh, different um, customers or buyers. So there are two building blocks in the system. One is producers, the other is hubs. And you can have, of course, producers that are themselves a hub if they want to do their own distribution. And this, the, the other very key um, model is the order cycle. Each hub can choose how we want to operate. For example, Cooperativa, this buying club I'm a member of, and we got vegetable every other week from the local farmers. We have an order cycle every other week. You can have for individual people maybe one order cycle per week. Like we don't go every day to, uh, to buy our food maybe to the store. But if you are a hub and you supply restaurants or uh, hospitals, maybe you need to have an order cycle every two days. And the platform enables you to choose that, the, the, the model which is adapted to your environment and your uh, yeah, the, the people you want to serve. So as a producer on the platform, I can, uh, I can create my profile so that people can find me. I can also um, open my own uh, hub, of course, and I can start distributing my products through different hubs. Uh, a hub can have many different business models, I told you. It can be a cooperative, like a gathering of consumers. It can be a gathering of farmers who choose to distribute themselves their products. Or it can be one people who want to start a, a, a model to reconnect and, and like uh, Matt Collective in Bergen. That's two people who started the worker cooperative and they're distributing product, but in a transparent way. So, but as a producer, I can connect with the people through a hub. And as a producer, I can also uh, like have my own shop front and organize myself the distribution if I want to do that. But most producers, they don't want to deal with the logistic and the packaging and all those kind of things. But it's possible to do it if they want. As a hub, the, the power of this system is also that as a hub, I can coordinate a network of hubs. For example, this Southeast Food Hub in Australia, it has in its network different producers, but it has also different buying clubs, community points in different neighborhood, and it, this hub organizes the logistic. It's much more efficient to cooperate for different hubs and the logistics so that each hub doesn't, have, uh, doesn't need to have half uh, empty, half full trucks that goes all over. Maybe we can gather different and products so that it's less, it's uh, most efficient on cost and carbon emission. So it's very flexible and, and uh, yeah. And as a buyer, I can find producers and hubs that suit me and buy from them. The transparency is ensured all over the platform. So you know about the hubs, you know about the, the, how the products have been grown, you know about who is the producer, you know about the price breakdown, you know what is, uh, when you buy something, you know what goes to the farmer and what goes to the hub. And what I was telling about disrupting the distribution system, it's like we are re really empowering people to recreate a full system with different kind of hubs who serve different kind of people who don't have the same needs, 
we, so we, we have those distribution hubs, but you can have logistic hubs that enable those hubs to cooperate on the logistic aspects when needed. You can even have import hubs, because I don't think we'll stop eating bananas now. So, but we can do it in a transparent way. And, and uh, we can have producers hubs. We can have an, an eco diversity. We talk a lot about biodiversity, but I would like to talk about eco diversity. We don't have one model who needs to be imposed to the people, and we, don't, we can all create the model we need. So it's about yeah, cultivating this eco diversity and re uh, intermediating, reconnecting communities and people. I'll skip this example because I think I don't have time. Uh, yeah, so we have. Um, the, the, I told you the project has started uh, in uh, Australia, and it's uh, almost uh, ready for the, the launch. So there are already a lot of uh, hubs, existing hubs in Australia and producers testing it in, uh, in Australia. In UK, it's interesting because there, there were a lot of existing buying clubs and cooperative in UK, but each one had this problem. They had, they had built their own system and it was hard to maintain. So they decided together, they created a community interest company, which is like a cooperative of those, all those cooperative, to, to uh, import this open food network and run it in, uh, f for UK. We have a very different situation in uh, Norway and Scandinavia because there are very, very few buying clubs and hubs alternatives in Norway. So we have built a non-profit which is supposed to be an incubator. So we are importing the platform to Scandinavia to make it easier for new hubs to start. So we provide this as a tool and, uh, and also to make it easier for existing hubs to start cooperating. And th what that's... Uh, people have contacted the, the initiator from all over the world. We have a kickoff meeting in two weeks in France. A thousand micro farmers in South Africa have taken the code from GitHub and put it on the server and are starting to use it. And we all cooperate, of course, that's an uh, Afro GPL license. So anyone who is um, adding one brick has to share it with the community. So we build the commons. And we have, of course, some challenges. So we are uh, in, in the first um, step. So we, we have a lot to do, but we are really. Um, we think it answers needs and our challenge is like, it's not trivial, it's, the technology behind the platform is not trivial, so it's hard, it's not so easy to build the open source community around the platform and, um, and, and also it's growing like every, every day new people calling from all over the world and we are, so it's, it has a lot of energy. We have, uh, we need to build this international governance and collaboration. We want, we don't want to control the system, we want a local ownership and control, but we have to find the balance between mutualization and, um, and independence and autonomy. So, for example, we have chosen not to have only one instance, but each new region who start has to build it and manage its own instance. And interoperability, how do we connect with accounting and all the other tools that the hubs need to function? And, of course, money is also a big challenge. So, we, we are all building business model to to. We want th this platform to be very accessible for everyone, but also we need to be able to find a sustainable business model. And we are looking for someone locally because we have just started in Scandinavia. We think that uh, we have started in Norway, but we think the Scandinavian scope may be uh, relevant for uh, for us because there are almost no hubs in uh, Norway. So that's a call that I'm launching. If some people know about Ruby on Rail, uh, we need someone locally because we have no technical skill for the moment. That's the Australian people who help us, but they are really busy with their Australian platform. So we need to find someone locally to help us build this uh, here. And we have been nominated for the WeShare Fest, so you can vote for us, and uh, yeah, and you can come also to WeShare Fest next week. Next week, thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I think this is super inspiring. Me as an expert here, kind of to uh, the food situation, we clearly need to work on that. So um, I hope we'll all join this initiative. That's you and me. Uh, do any of you have questions? For here. Sorry, I didn't hear. I, I didn't see a URL for your website here. Yeah, Good. yeah. But we are just testing in right now, so we have not yet done the customization. So we are we need some people to to join the team. We are just two people, and we need some right. technical people to join so the team. So we just need to quickly hack it before we can all use it. <laughs> so more questions. I was going to ask about the state, but that kind of answers it. <laughs> yeah. The whole thing needs to be built. Cool. I yeah. think this is really awesome. There is another question. Yes, I like this uh, a lot. And uh, I also support local farmers and so on, farmers market. 
I was just wondering about you know things coming from other parts of the world, things you can't grow here, like say mangoes in Nordic countries. Uh, uh, how how do how will that function in this organization model? Things coming from far away that you can't make locally. Well, actually, that's the, the, we are building. We are just starting to build that. But the vision is that you can have. You need to have some scales. Like if you want, if as an individual, I want to buy oranges from Turkey. It's not really efficient if uh, I, I have I need one truck to transport just my oranges. It's much more efficient if we can gather to to uh, to have uh, less cost and also less impact on the environment. So two things. First, by trying to build effective local markets, we want to, of course to have more local consumption. But for those remaining uh, imported consumption, we can have we can at least bring back transparency. So you can have an import hub which work, for example, with uh, different producers and that which can gather enough quantity so that it can organize it in an efficient way, but in a transparent way. So you will know that your bananas have been grown by this producer in this country and you will know how this producer works. So it also raises awareness about how the products are, are, uh, are grown and how they are transported and what is the real cost also behind that. We want to bring back transparency in the system. So you can definitely have an import hub and you can even in other parts of the world have an export to hubs because they, they have maybe have the same problem like in Turkey maybe they want to export oranges and citrus and a lot of different products that, uh, that are needed in other parts and maybe that's more efficient to gather them in one port and the other to be able to have uh, efficiency on the logistic aspect. But this is free, this is any, any new initiative that's also empowering new enterprise to start. Anyone can start, and the threshold to, uh, to use the platform is very, very low. So we have uh, like five and a half minutes before the next more technical talk comes again. I think there's room for another question if we have any. If not, okay. <laughs> So I have a question about the, the platform itself, uh, the software. Uh, is it uh, also running uh, on a decentralized platform? Or? No, that's what I was saying. The code is, uh, is uh, shared. So uh, anyone who it's the license like that force you to, uh, to share with the community when you... Uh, I, I'm not technical, so I'll try to answer. But the, the choice we have made is uh, each new community you start uh, has to build its own instance because we want to protect the system from itself. Is tomorrow Open Food Network want to change, uh, we, want to be, we want the system to be resilient. So that's the local community who control the local system. And each hub is also independent. The platform is just a tool for, for a cooperative. They can also change the platform if they want. So we want a resilient system. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks again, let's uh, give another round of applause. Thank you.